Howdy friends. Uh, today is November 6, 2022. Uh, my name is Kevin Gilmore and I serve as a pastor here at First United Methodist Church of LaPorte, Texas. And uh, today is our Commitment Sunday for our Taking the Next Step generosity campaign. We've called this one, uh, This is the Way. And we've been talking about how uh, Jesus is the way, how we prepare the way, all of those things. And then today we're finishing off with a still more excellent way. It's a uh, opportunity for us to reflect on all that Jesus has done for us and to reflect on gratitude and all of the things that, that we can do now for God uh, through his church. And so uh, I hope you'll take a moment and, and as you're watching this time of worship today, uh, reflect on that. Uh, reflect on what you might be considering as you answer the question, Lord, where do you want me to be in my giving? Thanks for watching. God bless. Holy and loving God, we thank you for this place and the people that we find here. We thank you for the call you have placed upon each of us, and we thank you for the call we have together. Give us soft hearts, open minds, and attentive ears today. Help us to give ourselves to you and your call upon us as freely as you gave yourself to us through your beloved son, Jesus. Only you know all that you are doing through us. Only you know how many hearts are turned to you here, how many kind words and prayers are offered by people all over our community, how many hungry are fed and disheartened or discouraged through unseen acts of kindness of these people in their everyday lives. Only you know what might be what you might do in us, what might happen through us, if we would but put your call first and foremost and serve you completely. You have a dream for a day when every tear would be dry, when you would be all in all, when there would be no hungry, when every person would sit down to eat under his own fruit tree and every sword would be beaten into a plowshare. You have a dream for a day when your glory would be so revealed that the whole earth would see it together. Make us a haven of hope in the midst of despair. Make us a place of love in a loveless world. Make us a place that will be a family to those who are alone. May your kingdom come in us. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we entrust your prayers and petitions into your hands. Gracious Father, we share them with you now. Lay your healing hand upon these hearts and spirits. We place our lives and our trust in you, O Lord. We pray all of this in the name and power and authority of the Lord Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. What if we could love the way Jesus did? Passionately, faithfully, powerfully. What if the way we love could make a difference in the world around us? What if that love looked at everyone the way God does? A love which doesn't see the past, but is consumed by a desire to see people come to know Jesus. A love which is patient and kind, not envious or prideful. A love which puts others before ourselves, chooses peace over anger. A love which protects, trusts, hopes, perseveres. Do we love like this? Do we love like Jesus? Maybe it's time to ask a simple question. How can we love better? Today is Commitment Sunday here in live worship uh, on campus. Uh, if you are watching online this morning, that means that you're not here with us. And so uh, we'll be mailing you a commitment card and so hopefully you'll, you'll have a moment to uh, fill that out and send it back uh, in to us. Throughout this month, uh, we've been taking the next step in our generosity journey by understanding how Jesus is the way. Uh, the first step, the uh, first Sunday of this series, uh, as we prepared the way, uh, we talked about gratitude and gratitude for all that God has done for us in Jesus Christ. Uh, then while we try to pin Jesus down so that we can always find him, Jesus invites us to join him on a journey, a way, a way that transforms everything about our life together. And as we walk with Jesus, we seek to be uh, disciplined in our discipleship, paying attention to what we have received and how we might uh, use the gifts entrusted to our care. You remember I talked about uh, tithing last week. This morning, we turn to Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, chapter 13. So let's pray. And now, God, may your word be proclaimed, either through me or in spite of me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you might remember if you've read the scriptures a few times that this, this chapter in 1 Corinthians is a, a beautiful hymn about love. Uh, it is the center of a three-chapter discussion of spiritual gifts. Uh, these charismata or, or grace gifts uh, are meant to help the body of Christ praise the Lord. However, in Corinth, spiritual gifts have begun to tear the church apart. So Paul is lifting up to them uh, a gift that is essential for all of the other spiritual gifts, love. And so he begins with the last verse in chapter 12. So we're going to start there. But strive for the greater gifts and I will show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of humans and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. 
It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of wrongs. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. So Paul continues to talking about love and how love will never fail, how all of the other gifts might fail, but love will never fail. And then he gets to the, the really, you know, well-known, famous verse. And now faith, hope, and love remain. These three and the greatest of these is love. Now this past week, as you might expect, in preparation for this sermon, I read more than my fair share of commentaries on 1 Corinthians 13. I even took 1 Corinthians as a uh, class in seminary. That's what we focused on uh, for the entire semester. So I've read a lot on 1 Corinthians. But what might surprise you is that almost universally, all of those commentaries and all of the, the higher level teaching uh, say that the first task of the preacher when approaching 1 Corinthians 13 is to rescue this text from the white dresses and rented tuxedos and bouquets and unity candles and all of the other practices and paraphernalia that the culture uses to, to prop up its romanticized notion about marriage. <laughs> because that is true, right? For most of us, when we hear 1 Corinthians 13, well, our minds immediately turn to a wedding because that was the last time we heard this text read aloud. I, I did a wedding three weeks ago. I read this passage myself. So in some ways, it may, may strike our ears as odd to hear these words on a Sunday morning instead of a Saturday afternoon. Yet, I hope that oddness will be of help to us. Perhaps the Holy Spirit might liberate this text from what we already know that it says. Now, while I am not sure that this famous hymn about loves needs to be saved from weddings, I use it myself. The commentaries are right to remind us that Paul was not writing about, he was not writing about weddings and marriage when he penned these famous words about love. The oddness of hearing this text this morning might also encourage us to, to take a second look at that last verse from chapter 12 again. But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. Paul has been discussing the gifts that are necessary for the church's life and worship. Now, all of these gifts are vital for the church's health, they're vital for the church's witness. But Paul says there is yet what we usually translate as a still more excellent way. Now, while a still more excellent way works great for a sermon title following a series called This Is The Way, it may not actually be the best translation of that verse. The original Greek word that Paul uses here is a word that's that's typically used to amplify something. For example, in other places, when Paul uses this word, grace becomes abundant grace, or crushed becomes utterly crushed. But here, the, the translation would be something like an extremely way. Well, that, now that doesn't make sense in a sentence, right? So translators turn it into a more excellent way. However, there is another way to read this text. This word that Paul uses can also be used uh, to refer to something that goes up, that goes over, that goes beyond. Uh, used to describe a way, it could refer to, to a mountain pass. So perhaps we might better translate Paul's aim here as, I will give you directions for a journey over a mountain pass. And what are those directions? Paul says, love. Love as directions for a journey over a mountain pass turns our attention 
away from all of the romanticized notions about marriage that our culture has thrown onto this verse because, because mountain climbing is hard. It's not sweet and sappy and pretty and beautiful and all those things. It's not, well, why can't we all just get along? The summer of 2020, my family and I took a trip out to Concan, Texas and Garner State Park. It is one of our favorite places on earth. I love, I absolutely love hiking up Old Baldy and seeing the view of the Frio River from the top. So this trip was no different. It was August, so it was hot. So we left early, early in the morning, packed plenty of water and headed to the trailhead. The kids took off ahead of us and Danielle and I did our best to put one foot in front of the other. It's very steep in places and there are parts of the trail that require climbing up and over some big rocks and parts that require us to actually help each other. It was hard work. We definitely needed a few breaks along the way, but eventually we all made it to the top of Old Baldy. The view of the river, as always, was more wonderful than words can describe. Now, is that the love that Paul is talking about here in this famous hymn? Is it the kind of love that requires getting up early and taking a risk, hard work and determination stopping from time to time to help one another to reach the summit. Yes, it is hard. And yes, it takes time. And yet somehow it is more wonderful than words can describe. Not just the summit, but each and every step along the climb. Is love a journey over a mountain pass? Every day, God invites us on this same kind of adventure. Not a, not a trip where he sends us out with some kind of rigid itinerary. A trip where God simply invites us. God invites us to join him on a journey. A journey toward love, where he asks us what captures our attention, what feeds that deep, indescribable need of our souls. And then leaning in a little closer, he whispers to us, let's go do that together. Yes, let's go do that together. Reminds us that love, that this journey is not something that we do alone. God has come to join us in Jesus Christ our Lord. God doesn't just talk about what love is. God shows us. God shows us what love is. From the beginning of this letter, Paul has suggested that the foundation of the Christian community and its essential proclamation is Christ crucified. For on the cross, God shows us what love looks like. It's not sweet and innocent. God shows us what love looks like by giving his own son to a horrible and cruel death on a cross. Jesus asked for water to drink and he got vinegar instead. Upon his head, a crown of thorns. Those whom he loved and had called to follow him fled for their lives. And then in a mystery that only God can explain, Jesus knew even total abandonment my God when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Oh, this, this love of God is far from simple and sweet. A wooden cross, nails in his wrists and feet, a sword piercing his side, and yet he still cries out. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And then it does not end there. A body dead, prepared for burial, wrapped in cloth, and laid in a tomb. And yet there is still more. An early morning visit, the stone rolled away, fear and terror, but then a message. A message of good news. He is alive. This is how we know that God loves us. 
God shows us love. And it is a love at great cost and personal sacrifice. Yes, when Paul is looking for someone to show us the way over this mountain pass, even without explicitly calling him by name, he points to the one who is love, Jesus. My friends, I want to invite you to join me on this way of Jesus. It's not a way that is sweet and easy. No, it is difficult. It is like climbing a mountain and yet somehow still more wonderful than words can express. Each and every step along the way, Jesus walks with us, encouraging, challenging, guiding us. And I am convinced that that we find ourselves today, we find ourselves today in a time and a place in history where this journey is needed now more than ever. Hatred and apathy and division threaten this world at every turn. But I'm reminded in the words of J.R.R. Tolkien's great wizard Gandalf, some believe that it is only great power that can hold evil in check, but that is not what I have found. I have found it is the small everyday deeds of ordinary folk that keep the darkness at bay. Small acts of kindness, and love. Yes, First United Methodist Church of LaPorte, we are following a still more excellent way. And it is the way of love. Jesus is calling you and me to join him on this way. Will you take, will you take a step of faith? Will you take your next step in your journey with Jesus? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen.
As I mentioned at the beginning of the sermon uh, this morning, if you are not here in live worship, then you will receive, hopefully receive, a, a, an estimate of giving card in the mail this week. I would invite you to fill that out and return it to the church here. If you do not receive one, uh, please, please let us know and we'll be happy to, to get one to you. I apologize if that happens, but we would love uh, for you to be included in this, uh, this awesome process where we estimate our giving to God. I want you to receive that card. I encourage you to prayerfully uh, look over it, uh, continue to ask the question, Lord, where would you want me to be in my giving? And then fill it out and then return it here to the church. Uh, thanks for all that you do for us. Thanks for your prayers for us. And uh, as I always say, if we can do anything for you, please let us know. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forever. Amen.